In my previous video I've demonstrated for you guys the Anaconda Burst Slash Signature. Now let's do the cool Vermilion Burst and we can move on to some other interesting things like the Ghost Horse and the comparison between the Epiphone Les Paul Custom and the Gibson Les Paul Custom. Check out the Vermilion Burst. <laughs> One more time, electric guitars slash collection. Here we find the Epiphone slash J45 that we don't care too much in this channel about. We do mainly electric guitars. I've already demonstrated the Victoria for you guys. I'm gonna link the video above. I've showed you a lot of the bursts, starting with the Appetite Burst. Check that video out if you wanna know more about the Epiphone slash collection and the Inspired by Gibson collection. Last time I demonstrated for you guys the beautiful Anaconda Burst in green, I'm gonna link that video above. Eventually I'm gonna find the November Burst, not right now. Now we will do the Vermilion Burst. I know, I know, I do a lot of Epiphones lately, but they're worth it, especially the Vermilion Burst. Just look at it. And here's the thing about the Slash Collection, usually people go for the Appetite Burst or the Victoria Go Top. I mean the Appetite Burst sold the same day we got it for the shop, didn't even reach the online shop, sold immediately. So it was a bit of a surprise for me that the Vermilion Burst and the Anaconda are not in such a huge demand, they're available almost everywhere. And I completely understand the reason for that, it's the same reason that the Jerry Cantrell Prophecy Bone White is available, because you don't see the artist themselves play the guitar on stage. That's the thing about signatures, man. You gotta see the artist play the guitar. You will want to own the guitar if you see Slash hold this guitar more. And he plays the Gibsons mainly, you know. I know that it looks like the Gibson Vermilion Burst, but they're quite different. And there's a huge difference in price, of course. For me personally, it doesn't matter. The fact that it's a Slash signature is pretty cool. But I look at this guitar as a very nice Epiphone Les Paul standard. And that's the key word here, it's a standard. If you don't like the chunky necks of Les Paul standards, if you don't like the heavy bodies because this doesn't have the weight relief, stay away from the slash signatures and the standards. If you're into chunky necks and heavy Les Paul bodies, go for it. The slash Les Paul is an amazing deal because it is a part of the Inspired by Gibson collection, it has the Gibson electronics, it has a hard shell case, and it's a signature guitar for one of the most famous rock musicians out there which means that it's gonna hold its value or most likely it's gonna increase it when it's no longer available in stores. I've just told the Indian Laurel fingerboard so it's gonna look stained like this a little bit for now. It was extremely dry like all new guitars so I suggest you order the fingerboard the first thing you do when you get a new guitar. Let's go, two piece mahogany body, three piece plain maple top, two piece figured maple veneer on top of that. Then there's the neck made out of mahogany with the set neck construction, Indian laurel fingerboard, 22 medium jumbo frets, 12 inch radius, Kalamazoo headstock, vintage deluxe tuners, the Graftech nut, you got a set of custom Pro Bucker Aonico 2 pickups. The bridge and tailpiece are the trusty Epiphone lock tone, so pretty much the same specs as the Anaconda Burst. Let's measure the custom Pro Bucker Aonico 2s, starting with the bridge. Well, it measures at 865, soft, but it sounds pretty harsh, that's the only complaint I have with this guitar. The bridge pickup sounds pretty harsh. Now let's check out the neck, I like this one, it's creamy sounding just like a slash signature should sound at 813. Middle position, 418. Carved hard maple cap, so the pickup rings are curved, slanted, short screws for the front, long for the back. Here are the controls, bridge volume, neck volume, bridge tone, neck tone, these are the black top heads with dial pointers. Business as usual with the bridge, the trusty Epiphone lock tone, the lock on the bottom locks to the struts using some inserts here, individual saddles, single spring holding in place, metric adjusted by a thumb wheel and flathead screwdriver. The Epiphone lock tone tailpiece that goes with the bridge. Single ply, cream binding for the top which looks pretty good in combination with the Vermilion Burst. I can't help but draw a comparison between this and its Gibson counterpart. Same as the Anaconda Burst, the Vermilion costs $2000 more than the Epiphone. 
you are paying for top quality materials and one of them is the AAA Flame Maple Top opposed to the maple veneer that the Epiphone has. That's not the only difference between the Epiphone and the Gibson of course, I think the Gibson looks a little better but it should for a AAA top and $2000 more. You don't have to pay $3000, this looks amazing in person. I prefer the Anaconda Burst a little bit better but that's personal preference. And check this out, the neck is bound as well. It has black side dots, set neck construction, Indian laurel fingerboard, 12 inch radius, 22 medium jumbo frets and on this one I think the trapezoid perloid inlays are chosen perfect. All of them are consistent throughout the fingerboard, their pattern. The Anaconda Burst had a plain looking one on the 7th fret. The fret work is, uh, let's say, okay, it's scratchy a little bit but they seem to be done well. The graft tech nut is okay as well, not exactly flush with the binding and the headstock veneer, but I give it a pass. The Kalamazoo headstock has a black veneer, polyurethane finish, Les Paul model gold silk screen and this is Perloid Epiphone logo. Epiphone vintage deluxe tuners. The truss rod is two-way adjustable with an allen nut. The cover for it, the Epiphone bell has the slash signature on it, two ply, gloss, three screws. And business as usual with Epiphone, most of the screws were not properly mounted. The first fret is almost 43mm wide or 1.68 inch. The 12th fret is perfect at 53.5 or 2.10 inches. The first fret is at 22.2mm or 0.87 inch, chunky. The 12th fret is massive though at 25.5 a full inch. Full thickness body at 50mm or 1.96 inch, no weight relief. The fingerboard radius is 305mm or 12 inches as usual. 24.75 inch scale length. The massive standard neck has a C-shaped slash custom profile. Back of the neck, set neck construction, gloss finish, one piece of mahogany with a separate piece for the heel. Typical construction for the Epiphone, scarf neck joint for the headstock. It is a chunky boy, keep that in mind. Here we have the QC inspection sticker, handcrafted in China and the Scully logo that Slash puts on his guitars. Epiphone Vintage Deluxe Tuners, I'm not gonna take these out, I've already demonstrated some of them in my other Slash videos, check them out. The pressed serial number is a bit hard to read in this slide but we have 220515. May of 22, made in Qingdao, China. The Vermilion is a heavy boy and it should be, there's no weight relief, it is a standard and it's 9 pounds and then some. Now let's hear it. <laughs>
Now here's the thing about the Vermilion. I think it's great value for money. You can check out the hard shell case in my Anaconda Burst video, I'm not gonna do it again here. But for a standard in such a cool core, a slash signature with a hard shell case, it's a no brainer. It's gonna retain the value, it's gonna increase the value, so get one while they're still affordable. However, if you don't like chunky necks, stay away from it. Stay away from 50 standards. You already heard my complaints in the Anaconda Burst video. I don't like the fact that this comes without the certificate of authenticity. For a guitar that Slash doesn't play too much on stage, a photo of him holding it would have been nice at least. My other biggest complaint is that I'm not a huge fan of the custom Pro Buckers. I think I have a solution for that though. It's not cheap, but it's gonna massively improve the guitar. And this next advice goes for any Slash Signature Epiphone. You get yourself one of these. The Seymour Duncan Aoniku 2 Pro Slash Signature Humbuckers. These are amazing and they come in different colors. You don't have to buy the Zebra, get a black set for the Vermilion. Even though the Zebra will go good together with the cream binding. But get one of these, it will greatly improve the value of the guitar. So here's my verdict, the Epiphone slash Les Paul Standard Vermilion and Anaconda Burst are almost the perfect slash signature. You can make it the perfect slash signature yourself. Get yourself the Seymour Duncan pickups, install them and rock the hell out of this thing. I know it gets a little bit expensive especially when you buy the Seymour Duncan pickups but trust me, it's gonna pay off eventually. These are not in high demand right now but I think people will catch up and they will go up in price.